data. We love it, we hate it, we crave it, we need it. Today we're gonna learn how to track trends, identify areas of overspending, and visualize our progress in like 4,000 different ways. Let's go. YNAB is where we keep all our financial goodies. How we spent, what we made, our loans, our assets, everything. So if you haven't dove in, divin, dived into the beauty of the reports tab yet, you are missing out on a whole other world of YNAB. So hop on my tour bus, we have hats. First, a disclaimer always. Reports are extremely minimal on mobile, but they are flourishing with details and functionality over on the web app. So if you're wanting to deep dive fully on reports, grab a laptop, sit down at your desktop, and let us plunge. When you go over to the reports tab in YNAB, you'll notice three different sections at the top. Spending, net worth, and income versus expenses. Now, we're gonna go over all these today, but first I'll point out one top-notch feature that all three reports have. You can sort and filter by categories, date range, and accounts. By default, each report type is gonna show you all your categories, but you can edit the category selection to show just your monthly expenses, only your savings categories, or only your fun and flirt spending like coffee and dog toys. You got select all, you got select none, you are the master of this journey. The time frame filter allows you to sort data by totally customizable date ranges or preset ones like this month and this year, even all time. The accounts filter helps you see the growth or movement of a certain account or combination of accounts. Select one, select 12, look at only your budget accounts or deep dive into your tracking accounts. This filter gets particularly handy in the net worth report. So if I only wanna look at my debit card spending for this year, I can do that. If I only wanna see my mortgage progress since we bought our house or see which partner did the majority of the spending this year, I can do that too, all by selecting a unique combination of these filters. Now that we know our filters, let's take a look at each of these three main reports. Starting with spending, simultaneously my favorite and least favorite report to look at. If you're the pie chart type, use the totals view. If you wanna see how your spending categories have ebbed and flowed over time, click over to the trends view. By default, your spending totals or spending trends will show data for all your category groups over whatever time period you have it set for. So currently I have mine set to the latest three months. And as I hover over each section of the circle graph, I can see how much money I spent in each category. So 1,700 on non-monthly expenses, 3,000 on frequent and 9,700 on bills. And it even shows me what percentage of my money went toward which category groups. You can use the legend in the bottom right hand corner to see which colors correlate to which category groups or categories. We also get a nice peek at our total spending for the time period and even our average spending per month. Yeah, did you know how much it costs to be you every month? Cause I did not. Now, if we wanna see what all our money went to within these category groups, click any of them via the circle chart or the legend to peek at your spending within that category group's categories. Now, all the information on the right-hand side of the screen changed to reflect spending totals and averages for that particular category group instead of the budget as a whole. Click any category and you'll get a pop-up of all the activity that happened within that category and the timeline you selected, which is also a great way to get a visual of your average spending in that category. And at any point, you can go a step back in your breadcrumb trail by clicking all categories in the upper left corner. Now, let's trade in our circle graph for a trending graph and see what happens. The trends view lays out your spending month by month, making it super easy to see trends within your spending. Hover over any section of the trends chart to see spending totals and percentages. And just like with our circle graph, we can click each segment to take us a little deeper into our budget and see our spending more clearly. Also, uh, there's a chance you're looking at your budget right now and you're like, wait, there's a whole category group missing from my reports. Where'd it go? Don't panic. Mine is too. See, it's my goals category group that isn't showing up in my reports tab. I wonder why that is. That's because any categories without spending or transactions in them won't show up in reports. And since this person's still saving up for a vacation and summer camp and a new computer and a rental property, and they haven't actually spent any money in any of those categories yet, that category group won't show up on their report. So let's say I go ahead and buy the plane tickets for the Caribbean trip real quick. 
now we can see that the goals category group has been added to our reports. So that's the humble pie we like to call the spending report. Let's slide over to the net worth report and see what that tells us. If you're at the point in your financial journey where you've broken the paycheck to paycheck cycle, now you might be a little more focused in on building your wealth. And the more intentionally you budget, the faster your net worth graph will climb. That I know. YNAB determines your net worth by subtracting your debts from your assets, AKA subtracting everything you owe from everything you have. And again, by default, the net worth report will consider all your accounts, your checking, savings, credit cards, HSA, mortgage, car loan, investments, retirement, literally anything you've added to YNAB. And it's pretty self-explanatory. Debts will be found in red, your credit card spending, your mortgage, your car loans, your student loans, while assets will be found in blue, your checking, savings, retirement, HSA, stuff like that. Over here on the right, we've turned your personal budget into Wall Street. See how many months your worth went up and any months you might've taken a step or two back. Uh, we get it, we've literally all been there. It's kind of fun to watch how the red and blue stack up against each other month over month. Well, maybe it's fun, maybe it hurts. But this is the information we need to know how we can improve our financial standing. The trending line and dots in between communicate your actual net worth, AKA the difference between your debts for that month and your assets for that month or your spending and your earning. And this net worth report is where the accounts filter can come in major handy. Maybe you just wanna see how your spending money racks up to your credit card debt. Or maybe you just wanna remove your retirement and HSA accounts from the equation since you don't really plan to spend any of that money anytime soon. Play around with it. Our last report is the income versus expense report, which is great at helping us identify if we're really bringing in more than we're spending. Your income is shown across the top under the green income heading and your expenses are outlined below under the red expense heading. To see subcategories of each category group, click the triangle arrow to expand them. Here we have a breakdown for each month as well as the monthly average for each category and the total spending over the selected period of time. In my opinion, Opinion, some of the most useful information from this particular report is seen in the totals at the bottom of each month. Totals in red are months we went over budget and totals in green are months that we brought in more than we spent, which is good. And let me tell you, this report type gets wildly helpful if you use YNAB to run your small business budget because it comes in clutch during tax season. You can sort through all your different income sources, export whatever data you need. Oh yeah, and while we're talking about reports, you can export any set of data you want directly from the reports tab. Just make sure you have the right category date range and account selected that you're wanting a report on and click the export button in the upper right hand corner. Whatever you have selected at the time is what will export, so yeah. Now that's everything you can accomplish on the web app. There are a lot less tools and functions on the mobile app, but let's look at what you can do from your phone. And PS, the mobile app and the iPad app align, so if you are an iPad user, this mobile section also applies to iPads. First, you can get a peek at your age of money. This metric is quite simple, but can be a helpful gauge of where you're at or how far you've come. To access it, tap the reports tab at the bottom of the app, select age of money to open the report, and tap on the line graph. As you slide your finger across the line, you'll see your age of money calculation at any point in the past since starting this current budget. Now, what does our age of money even tell us? It tells us how many days go by on average between earning your money and spending it. Our goal is to age our money at least 30 days because it gives us more time to make decisions, adjustments, and just have a buffer between us and life. We can see on this age of money graph that this budgeter has come a long way since September of 2021. Looks like they probably made a big purchase around the beginning of 2022, steadily grew their money over the year with their peak age of money being 115 days, but they've started to lose their progress a little bit. This means they've started spending their money a little bit sooner after earning it than they were a few months back. This is a great indicator to slow down, revisit the budget and their priorities and adjust. Now, if we back up a page in our mobile reports, we'll also see a simpler version of our net worth graph. If we tap into it, we can see the net worth starting from when we first began this current budget. Now, remember that sudden drop in their age of money we saw just a minute ago? 
looky here, they accrued a big new debt here. What I'm gonna guess was probably a mortgage. However, we can also see that while their debt bars are slowly getting shorter, their asset bars are getting taller, meaning this budget is shrinking their debts and growing their assets. We can also tell that by looking at this line, which represents the sum of the debts and assets. It's slowly increasing at the bottom, meaning this budgeter's overall net worth is going up. Okay. Yeah, there you have it. The deepest of dives on YNAB's report tab. If you have some favorite ways to use YNAB reports that I didn't mention, share them with everyone else down in the comments below. Reports are a powerful tool that you do not, I repeat, do not want to sleep on. So get reports today. Uh, JK, you already have them, but check them out. Okay, thanks for watching y'all and I will see you in the next video. Oh my gosh, you guys. You have no idea what happens behind the scenes. It is rough. I do stuff like this all the time. What is that? You have so much to say. Did I say export? Like, not export? That's weird.